Stop complaining about the new rules in Major League Baseball. I'm gonna get straight to the point in this one. Rules have to change for the game to develop and adapt. I know the pitch clock and the shift and the bigger bases and everything else makes it feel like the great tradition of baseball is being ruined, but it's not. We've now played just over a month of Major League Baseball. In the first 32 days with the new rules in 2023, compared to the first 32 days in 2022, runs are up 14%, hits are up 9%, average is up 15 points, steals are up 54%, and games are 27 minutes shorter. Well, all of that means is more action, better baseball. We hear it all the time that baseball is boring and these rules are trying to fix that. I've made this video to help you understand why rules have to change and how new rules come to be. If you like what you're seeing, hit that subscribe button and never miss another Start Graving Sports video. Let's take it all the way back to the 1800s. The true origin of baseball can be argued about for hours, but we don't need to know that history. We just need to know what the game looked like at the time. The format of three strikes in your out and three outs per inning were two of the first rules. The diamond field of play with first, second, third, and home plate was a regulation. There were plenty of rules that would never work in today's game. Rule number 12 of the Knickerbocker baseball rules stated, if a ball be struck or tipped and caught either flying or on the first bound, it is a handout. So imagine that, a sharp one hopper in the infield was an out. A blooper in the outfield that is snagged on a bounce, an out. The rule fit into the times of baseball in the 1800s because it related to other childhood games. The rule, of course, was eventually protested and ruled out. And when that rule was changed that a ball must be caught before hitting the ground to be an out, I'm sure people were upset about it, but they got over it. Now, I'm not going to go through each and every rule that existed in baseball for the last 200 years, but I am going to tell you some of the craziest ones to ever exist. From 1867 to 1887, batters had the ability to request a low or a high pitch, and the pitcher had to put it there. Imagine Aaron Judge stepping up to the plate and demanding a thigh to belt high pitch every time. We may have seen a 200 plus home run season last year. Now, not saying we don't all want to see Judge mash that many balls, but the rule simply would not fit in our game today. You think Jacob deGrom and Justin Verlander would be happy to tell where pitches were going? I don't think so. How about this one? Catchers used to stand a few feet behind the plate and their job was to literally be a backstop, nothing else. No framing pitches, no throwing runners out, they just had to stop the ball from rolling away. If that rule had never changed, we never would have witnessed the greatness of Yanni Molina, Buster Posey, and so many others. But who needs to see them anyway? Rule changes suck, right? How about a home run rule that lasted until 1930? Any ball that bounced over the wall was a home run. The ground rule double didn't exist. Before that, the home run didn't even exist. Some parks didn't even have fences or walls, so the outfielders would have to chase balls down for miles. And for the parks that did have walls, the outfielder would have to jump over it and retrieve the ball. So I'm just imagining Mike Trout crushing one into McCovey Cove behind Oracle Park and Jock Peterson having to just go for a swim after it. Seems like a rule that should have never changed to me. You guys with me? Let's go back and never change any of these rules. We'll have no home runs, no real catchers, pitchers throwing underhand, hitters calling their pitchers in one hot flyouts. Sounds like the great tradition of baseball to me. Obviously, no, it's not. We know the tradition of baseball as the rules have changed through the years. Sure, those living in this early era of the game will remember it in this way, but someone born in the 1920s remembers their own era. Someone born in the 1980s has their own idea of the rules. Kids growing up in the 2020s will have their own version of tradition with the pitch clock and band shift being normal. I know it's weird for those who have watched baseball for years, but in due time, we will forget what the game ever looked like without these rules. There's many rules that seem like normal, but have been changed in this century. For example, a pitcher must face a minimum of three batters in an appearance or pitch to the end of a half inning. That rule was adapted not even a decade ago. When was the last time you saw or heard about a pitching issue regarding this rule? It's probably been a long time. Many people were mad about this change given that situational pitching strategy would be limited, but it's just a normal part of our game now. That's how all of these rules work out. There's an uproar about anything changing and it's forgotten about within five years. Baseball is not the only sport that this happens in. We can make whole videos about changes in basketball, football, soccer, and every other sport that people were mad about, but ultimately improve the game. Even in just three months of spring training and regular season Major League Baseball with these new rules, people have changed their stance on it. Prior to the season, we heard an uproar from many players who were unhappy with it. 
Flash forward to today, and players have already taken a liking to the new pace of play. Not every single guy in professional baseball will love something, but the majority can turn in favor of it, and we're already seeing it. And I know there have been some calls that give the pitch clock a bad look. Cody Bellinger should have never gotten a violation for getting a standing ovation in Dodger Stadium. That was a big mess up. But the rules are built for the player in mind. I've operated the pitch clock this season at the AAA level in over 10 games, so I can speak on it firsthand. Clock operators and umpires are trained how to start and stop the game in different situations. Obviously, if a player is injured, the clock won't start. If the left fielder has to track down a ball in foul territory, they're given time to get back to their position. The running of the clock is ultimately decided at the umpire's discretion. There's going to be a learning curve for all parties involved to figure out how exactly the clock should be run, but it will all be figured out in due time. It's important to understand how these rules come to be. Major League Baseball is not just throwing new rules into the game without having a second thought. They are tested at minor league levels in hundreds of games and even through multiple seasons. For the pitch clock, it began in 2022. Minor League Baseball plays under even stricter rules with a 14 second and a 19 second clock. The results of the testing were immediate. Games were 20 minutes shorter on average than that of those in previous seasons. There was a great reaction from players and coaches on top of shortened games. Yes, these people's opinions are taken into account when changing rules. There's a reason the minor leagues are used for testing. They're made up of professional players and coaches who know just a little bit about the game of baseball. If Major League Baseball was truly trying to ruin the game, they wouldn't ever test the rules out and would just throw them into the fire whenever they wanted. There's no intention for baseball to be ruined here. The rules implemented in 2023 are not going to be the last in a wave of new ones this decade. The biggest one that should be on your radar is the automated balls and strike system, or robo-umpires as many people like to call it. ABS uses a series of cameras set up around the field to watch the strike zone. On each pitch, the system signals whether it was a ball or a strike. It's a pretty simple idea. It was first rolled out in 2022 in the Pacific Coast League of AAA Baseball and is now being used in the International League as well. So again, I've gone to experience this firsthand with the Iowa Cubs. Let me tell you, the ABS challenge system is absolutely electric. Umpires call balls and strikes as they normally would, but each team is given three challenges per game. The hitter, pitcher, and catcher are the only people able to call a challenge. If they think a pitch was called incorrectly, they signal to the umpire and a challenge review is initiated. If you've ever watched tennis before, you might be familiar with the Hawkeye challenge system. If a player questions a ball in or out, an animation is shown on the jumbotron to determine in or out. Baseball has adapted a similar process. Once a player challenges a pitch, the EBS review is then shown on the jumbotron. The umpires or anyone else aren't seeing this call on an iPad or screen beforehand. Absolutely everyone is getting the result of the challenge at the same time. Players, coaches, fans, staff, umpires, everybody all at once. Enough explaining, just check out this clip from an Iowa Cubs challenge last week. Lively delivers. Jared takes it on the inside corner. It's a call third strike and he's gonna ask for a challenge. We are back. Oh, we are so live right now. Attention. Hey, the helmet the right away. Pitch has been challenged. Remember, you get three challenges per game. You better use them. It is. Oh, that's a ball. They win. I'm telling you, it's electric. That was in a stadium of just a couple thousand people, and you could feel the energy. Imagine it's game seven of the World Series, bottom of the ninth. The strike three is called for the first out, but the hitter thinks it was a ball. He challenges. The whole stadium turns to the screen to watch the call play out in real time. I've got chills thinking about it. There's nothing like seeing a challenge go in your favor or the boos you get if it goes against the crowd. We get the replay system for nearly every other play in baseball. Why not on balls and strikes too? That system could get rid of the horror that is Angel Hernandez behind the plate. It allows umpires to still call their own game, but gives players the chance to correct wrong calls. This is a rule change again. Many people will be mad at if it is eventually rolled out in MLB. But I hope at least if you watch this video, maybe I've given you a good first impression of it. Now, there are other rules being tested right now too. The Atlantic League, you have the designated pinch runner, the double hook DH, and disengagement limits. I can't speak on any of these firsthand, but they're rules you may want to keep an eye on. If they work out in the Atlantic League, they may be rolled out to other minor leagues for future testing. If they come to AAA and I see it in some games, I'll get back to you guys on what I think. But for now, don't be so bitter about rule changes. Just think what the game would look like if we still played it like we were in the 1800s. Change is good. The great tradition of America's pastime isn't going to be lost. The love for baseball won't be either.